Welcome back. Today we are going to talk about uh, this device called the Un Flamingo. So Un is a company who's been around for quite a while. I think they actually said this is their about their fifth generation of tube technology. So they've been around quite a bit. I have another one of their devices. This is actually the B1S headphone app. And you know what differentiates something like this? This is sort of a dedicated headphone app. You just need amplification for you know, coming out of your phone or coming out of a dongle. That's what a headphone amp does. This is a headphone amp, but it actually does much, much more, and it's priced sort of accordingly. So if you're just looking for a headphone amp, you know, I think Flamingo may be a little more expensive if you just want it for its amp uh, capabilities, but we'll kind of get into what it, what it really does uh, well. So this is what it looks like, and again, the distinguishing feature on this one is going to be this tube. It's a um, desktop amp with a tube, which is sort of unique, but it also has an op amp, and we'll get into that in a little bit. So the front of it has uh, your multifunction display and a multifunction display, which basically gives you the input that it's using, which is USB right now, the filter that it's using, and op amp, and the OPA stands for op amp, and you can actually easily switch between the two, double click that, and you switch to tube mode, switch it back, but what's sort of strange about this device is the, the amp or this tube is actually always um, on or enabled. You know, maybe it's not actually processing sound, but the, the actual tube itself never turns off. So you have to be really kind of careful about what you put on top of this and, and how you grab it to uh, switch modes like that. So the dial also does uh, change volume and it comes with a remote which will actually take you through the rest of the functions that are actually lined up. You know, the buttons are essentially lined up the way this display is lined up. So the top will actually control your input. So that's coaxial, Bluetooth, USB. And then if you press the, the second button, uh, it'll take you to a filter mode. So those are your op amp filter modes, which is actually kind of nice and kind of typical. I think filter modes, you try them once and you find one that you like and you keep it there. I think the default ones tend to be the most useful. It's like getting tuning filters for your um, IEMs, right? You get three choices, but the middle one, the one that's balanced is usually the one you stick with. I think filters are that way too. And then sort of the bottom button lets you switch those as well. So the uh, tube and op amp mode. So this is the remote, which is actually kind of nice. I think this is about $20 on its own and it is an actual aluminum remote, which is kind of nice. This is the box. It's a nice, attractive red box. I'm not sure there's too much info on the back, but we'll kind of get this out of the way. So as I said, so on the front, we've got this multifunction display, the tube uh, display. This is a 6.35 millimeter full-size jack for your headphones. This is the adapter that takes it to a 3.5 millimeter for your IEMs. On the back, we've got a couple different uh, inputs and outputs. So if you have powered speakers like I do on my desktop, you got RCA outs for that. So analog out. And then you have a coax in. If you have a, uh, if you have a separate DAC that you want to use, you can actually run coax into it. If you want to hook it straight up into your PC, this is a USB port. This is actually that USB port. And it has a nice cool adapter, which takes it down to a USB-C, which is how I use it. This is the Bluetooth antenna. So this one is the Bluetooth model and you actually can run Bluetooth straight from your phone. And that's the power and that is the switch. So let's kind of slide this over. So as I was started talking about this, um, this Flamingo, you really have to consider it in the grand scheme of what it can do and how they sort of pitch it and marketing it is it's really the multi-connectivity one for all, right? So the Flamingo becomes your desktop hub for audio. I plug my PC into it. Um, I don't use the coaxial input, but if you had a separate DAC like these other Un products, then you'd run that in that as well. And you could also use your phone. So you can actually go Bluetooth straight into the Amiga, into the Flamingo as well. So it's actually a pretty slick way to process a, a few different audio streams into one device and then output out to your headphones through that front port, through speakers on the RCA outs, or um, in, in aux, an auxiliary out as well. So 
you know, it's again, you really have to, if you're just looking for a headphone app, you know, this may not be everything for you. This is really sort of a multifunction device and it should really be used and considered in that context as opposed to, I just need an app for my phone or my dongle. It'll do that. It'll sort of do that, but um, you may be better off with a more dedicated device if that's all you need. So let's kind of talk um, some specifics uh, about what... So as I said, there's uh, three, di three basic differentiators about the Flamingo from what your typical desktop app might do. Again, this, this mixed OPA tube mode. So there is the tube, it has an OPA mode, which is slightly more detailed, and the tube is supposed to be a slightly warmer mode. This one does Bluetooth with LDAC and AppDAX, which again is really handy if you have a phone, especially if you're an Android person and you have LDAC. So you get super high res wireless audio, AppDAX high res as well. And like I said, this one really is a desktop audio hub. So it'll do, it obviously has a headphone output that has a DAC inside and it's amplified. So it is a headphone DAC app, but um, really it should be considered a hub. So sound-wise, so Un calls it aesthetic tuning. And even going back to, this is the, the B1S, and this one was a Class A headphone app. And, you know, for a couple of years, I've been trying to describe how they talk about sound. They call it aesthetic tuning. I think in other reviews, you would, you would really, when you talk about sources, you talk about coloring or analytical, or how they change sound, you know, rolling off the bass or rolling off the treble. And I think Oon has this more higher level, they call it aesthetic tuning, and it's kind of this relaxed, natural, musical. I would say it's very detailed, but not analytical. Um, it, it's a very, I have yet to find the right words to describe what their sound does, because it's not, it's just not as simple as, well, things are a little warmer, or you know, they roll off the treble, so it sounds a little smoother. That's that's not actually, I don't think that really covers everything they do. And how it interacts with other IEMs is, is actually really hard to classify. And I think I've kind of gone back and forth on some sets work really well uh, with the with the Oon aesthetic tuning, some not as much, um, especially on the B1S. This one really interacted with certain sets in certain ways and others and others in different ways really hard to put a finger on what I would say, but I wouldn't call it overly warm. And I will say it's smooth and it kind of sweetens the sound. Some rough recordings, you know, things that have um, kind of sharp edges, not really mastered all that well. Even on a bright set, it tends to smooth over and sweeten those. Um, I don't know. I've yet to find the right words for it, but I think I would say this one is sort of colored in a way and it's tuned to enjoy music rather than criticize. It doesn't really emphasize those sharp details. It's not an analytical, cold sound at all. It's sort of almost the opposite of that. And I will say, you know, what are the advantages of stepping up from your phone to a dongle to a desktop amp like Flamingo? For me, each one of those steps, you sort of notice the depth of music. And, and this one is really no exception. It's a really, and I don't change sources all that often. I don't, I, don't, I don't get them probably more than once or twice a year. So I tend to focus on one source for a very long time. And when I go to the next one, something like Flamingo, and you start noticing notes are longer and there's more depth to the sound stage. And just, you know, there's just more, more to every note. Everything is more noticeable. And I just sort of call that the depth of music. It's... Um, something you just have to get used to. And I think it's very hard for people to jump from a phone to a desktop amp without much time in between and really hear all the differences. They're all there. It's just a matter of getting your ears and your brain wrapped around hearing what are the specific difference. And I think even on this one, resolving sets uh, definitely will resolve more, but it's a really diminishing return. I mean, you're paying, this is about $289. You are paying a lot of money for... Um, the ability to hear, you know, a smaller bit that you didn't hear before. So do be aware of that. As I said, the mixed OPA and a tube mode, not as noticeable as, because the tube modes are already shades of smooth. This is aesthetic tuning isn't really only on the tube mode. It's on, it's on the OPA mode as well. 
So I think both of them are actually pretty close. And I think the, the OPA mode is definitely a hair more detailed. And the tube is probably a hair smoother. But I think they just sort of knock back or increase the smoothing on the treble just a little bit. And I wouldn't call it much warmer, especially if you look for warmer in that lower, kind of that mid-bass area. If you're looking for a boost in that area, it doesn't really do that. I'm not sure that's part of the aesthetic. I think that's not what they do. Um, but the sharp ends of notes, uh, I think they are taken a little bit back in, in, in tube mode. It just sounds a little bit smoother. Like I wouldn't say it sounds overly warm. I would just say that it just sounds a little smoother. So I think tube mode... For me, it definitely works better in, in background music. You know, I had this one on my desk. I listen to music all day. This one is going. I think for background music like that, where you don't want certain, especially if you're just reviewing IMs, you don't want sharp points to distract you as you're working. I think tube mode actually does that quite well. Um, definitely OPA mode for more critical listening, though. So BT mode with LDAC. So LDAC is definitely solid. Uh, I haven't really found any problems with LDAC. I don't go all that far either because I'm sitting at my desk and this is at my desk. But I would say the LDAC is pretty solid on this. And, and it's really just a slick way to patch in audio from your phone straight into a device and straight out to your speakers, right? This is sitting on my desk. Um, the RCA outs are actually going to my desktop PC speakers, which have two inputs as well. So... It's a really slick way if you have phone local on your if you have music local on your phone like I do, you know, to patch that straight into this device straight out to your speakers, you know, without having to really do anything other than you know hit a button to switch inputs on this, and uh, it's pretty slick. I have to admit that that was it's actually a pretty slick way to get uh, phone music from your phone straight through your PC speakers or your headphones because it it'll output that as well. So. Really slick there. So desktop audio hub, like I said, if you just want a headphone app like this guy, this is B1S headphone app. That's what it does. It does it very, very well. It is a single use device. That is not what Flamingo is. Uh, this one is very much that that multifunction device. Uh, Flamingo was really meant to be that hub for your PC, your phone, and your tablets, and sending music to your headphones and speakers. That's what it does. That's what it was designed for. That's what you're paying a little extra money for. But you know how it connects to your PC. I connected mine through USB-C. So in title, title streaming app on the PC in exclusive mode on your PC, the volume can be entirely controlled by this wheel. So exclusive mode is actually a pretty neat way to do it. So you set up your title application to output directly to the Flamingo. In exclusive mode, you control volume with the dial. Your PC can actually be set up so your normal window sounds actually go through the normal system device, but Tidal goes exclusively through this device. So again, a very slick way to patch music through to your speakers without affecting everything else on your PC or losing all the sound on your PC because this one can actually output directly to your speakers or your headphones without dealing with your system uh, control device on your PC. So I thought that was pretty slick, and that's how I use it, actually. Other interesting specs, DSD uh, goes up to DSD 512. I definitely tried DSD through uh, USB Audio Pro on my phone over LDAC uh, to the Flamingo. That actually works fine. You definitely need a really nice Wi-Fi connection to pull that off, and uh, but it does work quite fine. It also does support Aptex HD, and that is... That functionality is really on a Bluetooth edition only. This is the Bluetooth edition, and it costs a bit more money than the, than the non-Bluetooth edition. So as I said, USB and coaxial inputs. I tend to use the USB input seven filter modes um, not for your um, op-amp filter modes. Again, like I said, I tend to try them once and stick with the one that's probably the default. That's the way most things work out. 6.35 millimeter headphone uh, output the front and RCA outputs off the back and the headphone outputs 45 milliwatts at 300 ohms so again I think even this even the B1S it, it, they don't tend to be super high powered devices they tend to use their power sparingly but it's it always sounds good so I wouldn't say again I wouldn't say this is a super high powered app and I don't think they even designed it to be in that way it definitely has 
amp capabilities, but think of it as more of that hub. And it just happens to have a very nice uh, op amp and a tube and some audio processing. But yeah, if you're looking for just a high powered headphone app, you know, you could probably pick up one of their other devices. So some of the nitpicks on this guy, the tube is hot. This guy gets quite hot and it's on all the time. So I will eventually melt the cable on top of it. If you lay a cable with some thin insulation on it, I have a feeling that it's actually going to melt the insulation. But I think for me, having this on my desk so close to multiple IEM sets and cables, I had to be very, very careful about what was laying on top of this set while it was on. And I think I did that more so because I had to review it and I didn't want to review it with a melted cable on top of it. But I will say that I've actually left this on all day and it does get hot. It doesn't get exceedingly hot. It doesn't shut down. But I would be super, super careful about leaving it on all night. I'm not sure I would actually do that just by the amount of heat this thing generates. And then, like I said, at $289 for the Bluetooth mode, you should really consider that you're going to use all the functions. It's uh, quite a bit of money if you just want a headphone amp, but as a set or as a box that's going to sit on your desk and take over audio from your PC, from your tablet, output to your headphones, speakers, you know, it, as an audio hub, I think that price is more justifiable. But if you are just in the market for a headphone amp, you know, pick up one of their other models like that, which are more dedicated devices and probably more suited towards that function as opposed to this, which is really a multifunction device. So that is what I got on Flamingo. So again, thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you next time.